welcome back to the third installment of my beginner guide series today we will be looking at energy and how to use it abuse it read it and as well how to stay a little bit safe from someone that has more energy over you if you haven't yet watch the first video in this series because it's probably the most important one and that's about your mindset and what you want to accomplish i will also link a second video in the description which is the p59a video which shows a lot of examples so if you want more examples than the one that i have in this video then just take a look at that one it has a lot of examples that i didn't show in here because it was kind of double and i i think that the ones i have right here showcase it enough but if it's not enough for you then feel free to check that one out as well i will have everything timestamped so you can simply click the progress bar and lastly i uh, would be very much appreciated if you could give it a like maybe subscribe to the channel because these videos take me a lot of time and effort to make so some support on that would be would be great this will be the only example which i won't really explain i have a better engine he has a better turn rate so keep that in mind in the background i will explain the concept of energy which makes it so i can't really show anything other than just some filler content on the screen all the other gameplay all the other examples will of course have the same style as the aiming video so let's get started with step number one and that's reading your opponent's energy and knowing what to do with it the first step of this is just knowing your plane and i'm keep hammering on this you have to know your plane say you're flying your yak tree you're going 650 kph and you are going head on with a zero if that zero is not coming out of a dive you will have more energy period he's at most going 550 which is a good 100 kph slower than you and if you play it right you can simply stall him out and kill him well that's an easy one that's you having excessive amounts of energy what if it's a lot closer what if someone is chasing you if he's dead on your six so there's no lead pursuit there's no lag pursuit which i will put on the right to make it clear is basically cutting off your enemy's flight path it might look like he's catching you because the number below his main tag is decreasing but he doesn't actually have more energy than you so a very good way to find out how much energy someone has if he's on the same altitude level as you of course in props if someone is higher than you you can mostly assume they have more energy but it will still depend on their plane say you have a firebrand above you is not really much of a problem which i will explain later on as well but a very easy way to check how much energy someone has is by looking at him from your direct 6 or your direct 12 if the number is increasing or decreasing a lot there is a big discrepancy in energy if you are catching him when you're on his 6 you of course have more energy and if he's catching you on your six then of course he has more energy when you're looking at it in more of a stall fight like you're seeing in the background it's a lot harder to determine how much energy someone has and you will just have to eyeball it you will have to look at his plane what is doing how is it reacting because if you see that he's about to stall out and you're not and you're on the same altitude then you can just go up no problem there but you have to be careful of his plane again because say he's a zero he can just prop hang you going 170 kph and you still die so you have to know your planes but in general it's a lot of experience use the numbers as much as you can be careful that he's not cutting you off say he's on your your three o'clock and he's just flying right towards you it might seem like he has a lot of energy over you but it's say you're going 700 and he's he's a solo plane he's a spitfire maybe a zero and he's gaining on you you will notice at the moment you kind of turn away from him he's not really catching you anymore so be careful that you not try to reverse someone that's slower than you because it's not going to end up well if someone is on your six and he's slower than you you try to reverse it and he's more maneuverable yeah good luck you're dead and it's the same with this hurricane the only reason i was able to stall out this hurricane is because we started in the head-on we're going roughly the same speed and my engine outputs a lot more power which made it so that by the time he had to do a 180 he was already going so slow that he couldn't get guns on me anymore i will explain all of this later on in the video so i'm not gonna blue ball you on that one there he goes tail control out and this whole video will require you to read the opponent's energy if you're not able to do that a lot of things might go south and you might get shot out of the air because you misread it and he will catch you regardless so do keep that in mind congratulations you completed step one and you now know you have more energy than the enemy but you might wonder how do i use all this energy that i have now first i will try to explain to you how to use your energy advantage and afterwards i will go into what to do with the disadvantage of course if your plane allows you to do so we're going to start off with something very basic an altitude advantage in the head-on in the upcoming <coughs> animation we will be the bf109 and we're fighting a spitfire we all know that spitfire turns quite a bit better than the 109 so to go into a direct dogfight with the spitfire isn't the best idea unless of course a certain condition is met which i will cover after this example 
little bit of background we're slightly above the spitfire the spitfire is climbing we're going straight so we're going a little bit faster but not too much and from this position we can do a couple of things this one is luckily not that common but i should tell you that you shouldn't do it nonetheless it's the one where you pitch up because you think you have the altitude advantage and as you can see in my very nice animation it just doesn't work of course because he's very close he isn't far away enough to stall him out if you stall out you might have 200 meters above him but you're stalling in his guns a spitfire stalls way later than you and you're just a sitting duck very much not advisable one that however is quite common is the one where you slightly pitch down for the guy that's below you i have all this energy and what's the best idea i have here all right just commit in the head on and get an easy kill, right? And at the moment this might seem like a very bright idea, but in reality it's gonna look more like this. You got all the energy in the world and you decide to go head on with him, giving him guns on you and... Does that sound appealing to you? It doesn't sound appealing to me. So let's go into the way that's maybe better than going full commit head on when you have the advantage. You can also try to fly straight over him, but going straight over someone is never a good idea because it presents a very easy shot. So always try to at least go of a bit of an off angle so he doesn't get an easy shot on you. Now we're getting somewhere. So you're gonna fly over him, but you're not gonna go straight over him. You're gonna go a little bit of an off angle to make the shot a bit harder. But you pulled up instantly after the merge and we all know the Spitfire is better at low speed and a turn fight. And thus you gave him a very close shot. Because you pulled up instantly after the merge. You want to wait a little bit. Of course, if he does miss this shot, you can easily fall back down on top of him and kill him. But is it really worth the risk when you can do it risk-free? Instead of pulling up instantly after the merge, you want to fly straight for a little bit. And then start turning. Doing this will make it so that you are a lot farther away by the time he gets the guns on you. And thus, you will be very safe to turn around. Especially if the enemy has less energy than you. But this is also still a little bit dangerous because if he has more energy than you anticipated, he might be able to prop hang you. So instead of drawing this one, I will just show it to you as it makes it a lot more clear because it's kind of hard to draw in 3D. So this will be my preferred method of taking people in the head on when you have more energy. And I'm facing the same plane here, so there's zero to non-bias here. So what do I do? I level out, I get some speed. I turn a bit to the left, make it so that he has to climb further to get to me, making him bleed even more speed. So I just do a gradual turn to the left. He will climb after me. He's bleeding, bleeding, bleeding while I'm still maintaining mine. And then when he gets around 1.1, 1.2, I start turning slightly. I go in a little spiral and if he tries to follow this, he will just stall himself out. And here you go. Yeah, he's not getting anywhere near me. I roll over as he's going very slow. Makes it a very easy shot as well. And there we go. He's right in front of me. I compress a little bit because it's a CW21. He's in my guns, he's not going very fast, and a pilot sniper, man, he's dead. Seems easy enough, let's do that again. FU4B versus J2M. I'm way faster, he has a lot better climb rate. So, what do I do? First I engage the head on. Make him get triggered on me. I turn a bit to the left. He is cutting me off right now, so it looks like he's gaining. I'm gonna go on a very slight climb. He is still with bleeding speed trying to go after me. I'm just gonna go up, up, up. And because I'm not going straight away from him, he is still somewhat catching me. He's not having more energy than me, but he's closing the distance because I am turning inside of him. I'm not flying straight away from him. He's about to stall out. I'm a kilometer above him. I put my flaps. I only lower my throttle here because of my engine overheat. And he stalled out. There's nothing he can do. Unless I miss, of course, but I didn't. This was also a little introduction on using your top speed, which we will cover right now. We are the Yak tree on the left and we're facing a Spitfire. I have a lot higher top speed than it. And from the example that I will give you very soon here, we will have a lot of energy. But first I will actually draw this one because it's pretty in depth and it's very easy to screw up. The first thing I do is do a shallow dive to get on the same level. Make it seem like we have the same altitude, even though I'm a lot faster. And this way you can mask your energy level. The same way you can mask it by giving someone an angle that he's cutting you off on. And it makes it so that if I screw up, I have more energy to fly away from him and simply extend and reset. Now we merge and just to keep it simple and easy to explain, I will be going twice as speed. Don't take these numbers too literally, it's just there as a guideline. And what do most people do when they merge? They go up. And you can see that the Spitfire is turning quite a bit sharper than me. Because I'm one, a lot faster, so my turning radius is longer or bigger. And the Spitfire simply outturns me. Now after a little bit, you can see, well you can see because I drew it that way, the orange line indicates that he's getting low on speed. I'm still in the green. I have double his speed, I can complete this loop. He's gonna fall out of the air mid-loop. 
As you can see here, the red line indicates that he's about to stall. I'm reaching my orange line on the top of my loop and I'm about to go back down. Making it so that I regain my speed, I'm going to be back in the green while he's trying to recover from his stall. While he is stalling, I have plenty of speed to pull into him and finish him off before he can recover. There is one slight problem with this. If he's in a more maneuverable plane and you misread his energy level to the extent where he's going 100, maybe 200 kph faster than you thought, uh, you're going to die. That orange line you see right there will still be green and he's going to intercept you. Just a slight drawback, really. And now for the live action, I'm going head on with Spitfire. He just did a turn. I'm going near my rip speed. I'm going about 670. And that's a Mark 5. So he's not going to do anywhere near my top speed. I'm going to loop over and you can tell that he just he can't complete the loop. He's about to stall out. So I just go back up again. I complete a second loop on top of it. I was going to stall on top of him. Kill him. But then the Yak 3 came in. So always be aware of your surroundings. Don't just look at the one guy you're engaging. The thing is I had so much energy that I can do it again. I'm going to turn over him. It's kind of the same thing I do in a normal head-on. Where I dodge the head-on and just pull over him. And here I complete the loop. He's stalling out. Look at his guns. He's going to shoot. Which makes it perfect to see how low he is. No one near me can hit by AA. I'm looping over still. And the Spitfire is just stalling out. There's nothing he's going to do at this point. He's stuck too long. He's dead. And that's all she wrote. And I will show you something that might be a bit of a problem. Now imagine if he was 50 to 100 kph faster than me in this very loop. He is 500 meters away from me. What do you think I'm going to do? He shot. Yeah, I'm dead. Uh, that's, that's nothing you're going to do. Make sure to know your plane as well as the enemy's energy level. And another example. Flying against the I-16, which is very slow. I'm in a 109F1, which is pretty fast for the PR. And why do I not go towards him yet? Because he's bleeding speed. He's bleeding speed trying to climb towards me while I'm flying straight and gradually diving. So as he is dumping his speed, I'm gaining it. And because he's constantly shooting, I know exactly where he's pointing his plane at, which makes it very easy for me to dodge. I just go up, I have better climb rate, I have better retention, and he is way slower than me. He might outturn me, but that doesn't mean anything. Of course, again, if he was 100 kph faster than me, I wouldn't have done this. I stall on top of him, I lower my throttle a little bit to get more of an angle here. Because he's flying straight and the slower I go, the longer I can sit behind him. He stalled out, I only use the MGs to spare my cannon rounds because I only got 60 of those. And I'm already halfway through them. So you just finish your boom and zoom, you look behind you and you see a guy on your 6 that has an energy advantage. What do you do? Well, it's actually pretty simple. In this example, I will be showing it against the same plane because it makes it a lot more clear. We are the blue P-51 on the defensive and the aggressor is behind us. At 4 kilometers, 1 kilometer altitude advantage with about 3 kilometers of separation. Your first instinct should be to dive and pick up some speed. He's going 600, you're going 300. If you dive 1 kilometer, you will pick up a lot more speed than he will. Because he's already going a lot closer to his top speed. I drew the acceleration in the color. Red is a lot of acceleration, yellow is a little bit and green is nearing your top speed. Prop aircraft will produce the most kind of trust and most kind of energy when the rest are slowest. So if you start diving and you're going 300, you will pick up a lot of speed in your dive. Whereas the enemy that's going 600 will pick up relatively a lot less because he's already going so much faster. So if he sticks the dive and he goes all the way down with you, you will end up going roughly the same speed. Of course, he will still have the advantageous position and he will still be a little bit faster. But the difference will not be a kilometer above you with double your speed. It will more be about 500 meters above you with maybe 50 to 100 kph extra, which isn't as much as when you started out. And that's exactly what I will do here. We're facing the same plane. He's above me. He's on my 6. The difference in speed isn't as big as it was in the graph I just gave you. But it should make it clear nonetheless. P-51 dives on me. He's a bit faster, so I start a dive. I start accelerating towards the speed he's at. And once we reach our terminal speed... Well, we don't really reach that right now, but if we were to reach our terminal speed, we both kind of stop accelerating. And the distance remains the same. He still has the, the energy, so when we level out, he will catch me. But right now, I'm a little bit slower, which is something I want to use. Being slower means so I can turn a little bit tighter. We reverse each other. I'm on him now. Completely botched my roll. Couldn't get the shot. He starts to turn. We're in a dogfight now. He starts to pull here. I couldn't really get the shot. I hit him a little bit. I hear that he cuts his throttle, which is very important. Because the moment he cuts his throttle, I'm already behind him. So what do I do? I just loop over and there's nothing he's going to do. 
I'm just gonna be sitting on his ass now. And he's way too slow. He dropped throttle. I was going vertical. There's no room for him to dive out. And there you go, he's dead. So I have the altitude advantage. But I'm in a slower plane. Does that mean I can catch the F4U by simply diving on him? Well, yes and no. If I dove a little bit earlier and I pointed the uh, plane all the way in front of him, I would have been able to do a lead pursuit and I would have been able to cut him off and I would be able to get very close on a 6. I didn't do that for demonstrational purposes, so I can show you what your plane can actually mean in this kind of situation. Because in a straight line, he's a good 60 km an hour faster than me. Right now I'm going 730 and we're leveling out. Remember, my plane wants to go 500 in a straight line. His, his want to go 570. So, our speed starts to drop. And mine drops a lot faster because I'm a lot slower plane. So what do I do is I convert all of this speed into altitude. Because in this kind of vertical, when I can use my climb rate, the steeper you go, the harder I will outclimb him. If he goes in a very gentle kind of climb, he will completely leave me in the dust and I can't even touch him. Right now we both level out. And my thrust to weight is a lot higher than his because I have such a light plane. His plane is very heavy and it doesn't have the best climb rate and the best acceleration which mostly tie together very well. And I can just close the gap now. Of course if he just were to dive away right now, uh, he'd leave me in the dust yet again and it just becomes it becomes a really, really annoying fight. I can keep climbing, he can keep running, it kind of becomes a stalemate until one of us screws up. He goes into a dogfight but that's more of a meme. Uh, the 109E completely stomps the, the, the F4U in a dogfight. So I'm not going to waste your time with that. And here we are dogfighting an A7M in the I-225. I have a lot better climb rate and a lot better top speed. But of course he turns a lot better and stalls a lot better. So what do, why do I go up right now? I'm just bleeding him off his speed. Because of that loop there was no way I'm going to get my guns on. We're both relatively slow now. So I want to force him to turn once more. I'm going 600, uh, 470, which is plenty of speed to get away from this guy. So I turn once more under him, bait him into going for me, make him commit it, and now I just fly away. I do a shallow climb. This conserves my energy a lot more compared to his, because I'm going near his top speed in a climb, which means that he can only do that horizontally, while I'm also getting separation in the vertical. Of course he's a lot slower at this point so I'm getting both of the separations right now. I'm going to be climbing and he's gonna stick on me and because he's gonna stick on me I have such an energy advantage that if I do a very shallow climb don't try to do this in jets unless you're in a 163 or MiG-15 biz or whatever because they can just level out pitch up for you and you are going to die so I don't recommend doing this too often in jets as well as you just get to a party. Start doing a shallow climb again we're both going about 270. He's trying to do the lead pursuit on me, he's pointing his plane in front of me and he's still not gaining any distance on me. Which means that we're going roughly the same speed, but I have a lot more altitude. And because I'm above him, I can slowly start turning into him until I end up directly above him. I keep tightening up the loop, or the, the spiral, until he gets really close. I'm just pulling him in right underneath me and he's not going to make the horizontal climb. Because he's too slow to do so. He's going to stall out. And I'm still going to 300. And when I'm going 300, I have a very good climb rate. So what do I do now? Is I go horizontal, let him pitch up even more. Now I go vertical. He stalled out. I loop over. I roll over. Scottmate dies to a bomber in the background. Of course, it's not a video on my channel unless it's Scottmate dies. And I just pull into him. And you can tell that he just can't pull up. And that's all I have for you today. Don't forget to check out the P59A video. It's in the description as well as on the top right right now. You can skip the intro and you can watch till about 8 minutes in. You will see when the first game ends. And that's heavily focused on energy management as well as getting angles. Of course the playing turns very well so it kind of negates all of these things. But it still showcases it very well. This will be the last example. If you want more of these examples because I have plenty on my PC... Feel free to ask, put it down in the description or in the in the comments. I will uh, take a look at it. If there's enough of a request, then I will uh, cover those, put those on my channel, put them on the top right right here, as well as in the description, and I'll notify you in the comment section as well. If you liked it, please leave a like, stick around, subscribe if you want, so you can be updated when I uploaded more of these. And there you go, that's the last one of today. I will see you all very soon.